Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storms on us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a nice write-up by Russ about Deep Blue CLI. Deep Blue CLI is a PowerShell script that allows you to quickly and efficiently search and summarize Windows event logs. It actually comes from the Sans Blue team and Eric Conrad is sort of leading this effort. It's a pretty interesting script and Russ is sort of running through a couple scenarios here, what you can find with this script. Like uh, just for example, interesting events like starting and stopping of the event log service itself or finding evidence of the use of an interpreter and such. So it has a number of things that it's looking for. New users being added to the system is another one that I actually like uh, because that's something attackers tend to do if they have sufficient access uh, to the system. So uh, if you want to check it out, it's a free tool and uh, Russ is also linking uh, to the respective uh, GitHub repository. Security company SafeBreach has a blog post that shows how the Windows encrypted file system or EFS could potentially be used by a ransomware against the user. I not 100% sure how significant of an issue this is. I think in general, the problem with ransomware is that it does turn the security feature of encryption against the user itself. Now, of course, with encrypted file system, the problem is that it itself is often sort of whitelisted from various anti-malware that does try to detect if any software all of a sudden starts to encrypt files. If you're using the encrypted file system to do that, then your anti-malware is probably not going to alert you. Now, another interesting quirk to this is that uh, the files will remain usable uh, to uh, the regular user until the attacker decides uh, to flush uh, the EFS data from memory. And apparently there is a specific undocumented API call that can be used to do just that. Once the attacker does flush the memory, then of course the files become unreadable by the user. So it's interesting because most anti-ransomware, anti-malware software will not detect encryption done by the encrypted file system. And it's hard for the user to detect that anything is happening other than of course the system may be a bit slower and the lock icon will show up on folders indicating that they are encrypted. But until this information is flushed from memory, the user will still have full access to these files. And of course, Windows EFS is a pretty robust encryption solution, so it's unlikely that a decryptor would show up for any malware like this. And Kaspersky has a pretty interesting story about a new scam that is targeting victims of online leaks. Now, we have heard some in the past that there are talks about some compensation being offered if your data has been stolen in some breach, but apparently these scammers are claiming to be part of the US Trading Commission and they're offering you compensation for your stolen data. The only thing, well, you have to do is give them more data and in some cases even money to buy what they're calling a temporary social security number. Now, before they offer this temporary social security number, they will show that you have a compensation of a couple thousand dollars coming. So you probably won't really mind paying $9 for this social security number. I assume that instead of the $9 here, the goal is really to get a valid credit card number out of you that then could of course be charged however much money they would like to charge you. And sticking with more social engineering exploits for my last story for today, the FBI is warning about some fake job websites that are impersonating websites by large and well-known 
companies. Now, once a victim applies uh, to for a job on that website, they will actually go through an interview process that looks fairly legitimate. They will then be offered a job and often have to sign a physical contract, a job offer uh, to return to the criminals. And that's sort of then where the scam starts. They now will ask for personal information like driver licenses, social security numbers, and direct deposit and credit card information, supposedly for a credit check. And in some cases, they will also ask the victim to prepay for any costs for that background check. What amazed me a little bit is that according to the FBI, the average loss for a victim here is about $3,000. So something to tell probably relatives and such so they're aware of in particular if they're looking for a job. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.